Welcome to our presentation of Maryland Pedi Pediatrics Sentiment Analysis. Sentiment analysis refers to a tool that can be useful for businesses if employed correctly. It's a process used to determine the attitude of an audience with respect to some topic. It facilitates an ability to monitor interactions and identify and categorize drivers of, of dissatisfaction between patients and customers and agents. So, also known as opinion mining, opinion extraction, and emotion detecting. Sentiment analysis refers to a new approach to assessing patient satisfaction surveys. Sentiment analysis is particularly useful when assessing a minute survey conducted in an organization. A minute survey is a type of patient satisfaction survey. The first question is asked, ask the patient to rate the overall satisfaction with the care received. The second question of a minute survey asks the patient to explain what worked well and what needs improvement. Next, we'll see how sentiment analysis can be used to analyze minute surveys. She's been waiting half an hour. What took you so long? I'm in a hurry. My back is killing me. Can we just do this? I just got a collection notice from you people. If this affects my credit, I will sue. Here we have some sample results for Physician 11. We witnessed nine comments in total over the course of three years for this physician. We analyzed these comments qualitatively by assessing the remarks about physician performance for each comment. Based on these remarks, we determined that was, there was one complaint in 2008 signified by the red bar. Qualitative remarks for all other comments were determined to be praise. So here are some further results for Physician 11. Here we calculate days until next complaints by using, by using quantitative analysis to analyze the nine comments. With this determination, we use staff, punctual, helpful, and knowledge categories. The physician was scored from one to five in each of these categories, and anything less than four was categorized as a complaint. Using this process, we determined there were four complaints over the time period. We calculated a daily probability of, of 0 0.003 and days until next complaint of 290. This means that on, a, on average, we, there were 290 days in between complaints for Physician 11. Below that, we have an example of uh, a, co a comment that's, that was analyzed qualitatively. Here, based on the comments and remarks received, we classified this comment as a complaint based on doctor's advice and treatment. Qual qualitatively speaking, there was one complaint over the title, to total nine comments for Physician 11. So next, we calculate the physician benchmarks for the entire Maryland pediatric market segment. Overall, we examined 53 physicians and over 100 comments uh, with respect to these physicians. For each physician, we calculate days until next complaint and the probability of, of the complaints over the time period. We'll use this data to compare physicians 11's, Physician 11's performance. Using the benchmark data and the, data and the results for Physician 11, we next compared Physician 11's performance to the Maryland Pediatrics market segment with respect to the days until next complaint. For those physicians with days until next complaint under 400, we assign poor, a score of poor performance. Between 400 and 1,000, we assigned a satisfactory performance, and above 1,000, we assigned an excellent performance. For those physicians that did, did not that did not receive a complaint during the entire survey time, we assigned the maximum value of 1,597 days because th this was the highest observed score by any Maryland pediatric physician. As you can see, our physician 11 is scoring po poorly as compared to other Maryland pediatrics. Next, it's important to, to classify the comments received for all the physicians. Here, we examine the qualitative comments for all the surveys for all, for all 100 comments for the pediatric, pediatric physicians. Using qual qualitative analysis, again, Physician 11 received one complaint. This complaint falls from the doctor gives good advice and treatment category. 
This category is also the most common complaint type across the 100 comments for all the physicians. Next, we're looking at the quality of the components of Physician 11's comments over the study time period. We've highlighted and read some of the key parts of the comment that made this overall comment a complaint instead of a praise. We pulled out some of the key negatives, including scolded. Qualitative analysis of, of the comments is important because it, it gives you an ability to identify quality improvement opportunities and understand how the physician can, can improve specifically. Here, we classified this comment as doctor's advice and treatment and also as doctor's explanations. Using this, this method and this tool of sentiment analysis, uh, the doctor can easily see where he needs to improve and under, understand opportunities for doing so. So this presentation has walked us through some of the benefits and some of the processes of sentiment analysis. So let's discuss the overall benefits versus current practices. Again, hospitals and healthcare organizations are using uh, different forms of patient satisfaction surveys to assess um, satisfaction in the organizations. Typically, it's measured right now through HCAP surveys. And while these are effective, they also are conducted through a lengthy process. One of the key things that they do is examine demographics and other, um, other key determinants which may be beyond the scope of what may be necessary. So using sentiment analysis, there are really key, two key things that it can achieve um, that are better than current practices. One, there's the opportunity for cost reduction. Again, it's going to reduce the cost of printing, it's going to reduce the cost of handling and mailing, and it's probably going to reduce the overall cost of conducting satisfaction surveys in any organization. More importantly, it's going to in, has a potential to increase productivity. It's going to increase the response rate, and by doing so, it's going to reduce the need for follow-up reminders to those filling out the, the uh, surveys. Next, it relies on time to dissatisfied patient as opposed to percent of dissatisfied patients. And lastly, the real benefit is derived from the potential to increase productivity because sentiment analysis is done in real time. Thus, it can be used to improve, improve patient care in real time. Thank you, and we hope that when you're conducting patient satisfaction surveys in your organization, you'll think to use this innovative new tool that is sentiment analysis.